Northam. And joining me now is Owen Colfer. Hello, how are you? Good morning, Graham. How are you? Uh, I'm very well. All the better for reading your book. Uh, High Fire is the new book. It's uh, out on January the 28th in hardback, published by Joe Fletcher Books. And this is after, is it 19 years? You've been... it, it is. Well, actually, uh, I suppose I was not published for a long time. Oh, yes. Was so, that. <laughs> that was your life. Yeah. Yeah. So it's many, it's many decades. Um, but so first... Adult fantasy book. It is, yeah, yeah. And what? Why now? What was? You know, did something happen in your life? Did well, you know, the idea. A lot. When I go on tour, a lot of kids show up, so I cannot tell unsuitable stories, and I have a lot of unsuitable, funny stories. <laughs> so really, this enables me to go on tour and tell stories that are a little bit. Uh, off colour, which I've always wanted to do, and no, that's not a great literary reason for, <laughs> for for writing a book, but it's true. Because you could have made this in a way, f- you know, for younger readers, because yeah. it, there is a dragon in it. Yes. Uh, there is a, a young, yeah. one of the protagonists is young. Yeah. Uh, but you, I mean, it's very funny, and it is very adult. We should say, if yes. if if your fans are tempted to read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe their parents should flick through it first. I know, I do say that. Uh, when I'm uh, doing signings and they come up with some of my thrillers, I say, how old are you? No, not for you. And uh, that's the teacher in me. But yeah, I could have made it. It started its life as a kid's book. It was a very standard kind of old grumpy character meets young uh, young character, heart melts, end of story. But then it just didn't feel right until the dragon started swearing and drinking martinis. And I thought, yes, now... <laughs> Now we're getting somewhere. And then, of course, it became an adult book pretty quickly. Because your dragon lives in Louisiana, in a swamp yeah. in Louisiana. Yeah. And now, what do I know? But it took, <laughs> well, What but, did I know? No, but well, that's what I was saying. Like, to, to reading it, it seems incredibly authentic and those yeah. speech patterns seem really true. Yeah. Do, do, do you know that area? No, but there is a great show called, I think, Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> 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 Some so, serious <laughs> research. But... Uh, <laughs> Actually, uh, one of the American editors is from that area. So she kept me honest every time I went a little bit off piste. So, uh, yeah, that was great. But I just I just enjoy researching now. Uh, so I did a lot of research on Louisiana. And there is a legend of the Honey Island Monster, who uh, it's kind of like their Loch Ness Monster. So guys dedicate their lives and their careers to finding this non-existent monster who was created, apparently, when a, a circus train crashed into the swamp in the 40s. Yes. And you can see where this is going. <laughs> and a gorilla uh, had relations with an alligator and the monster was born. Of course. It's very logical. Yeah, I mean, it's a David Attenborough <laughs> episode waiting to happen. It's just... <laughs> Who we have. <laughs> More life on Earth. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so, I guess, uh, tell us a little bit about the plot. So, Vern yeah. is, he's the last dragon on earth. Burn is the last dragon on earth and what I wanted to do was create a dragon who was not noble like a Lord of the Rings dragon, who was a bit more like a Homer Simpson dragon who was just hiding out and watching flash dance, watching cable TV, uh, swimming around with the alligators and uh, drinking vodka and that's how he intended to spend his, his final years on earth. But then he gets involved with this kid, Squib, who's in trouble with the mar- the local constable and they all get dragged into a drug war in New Orleans. So, uh, But it's most, that sounds kind of thrillery, but I, w- I think it's mostly funny. It's mostly a funny book. I it is funny. It reminded, it was sort of as if Carl Heisen met fantasy yeah. Yeah. kind of thing. It's that. That's, I will take it. Yeah, I mean, I, it's always weird to compare a writer to another writer. But, yeah. but No, you have to do it. Uh, my best uh, review, or my favourite review of this book so far was the opening line of, uh, I forget which newspaper he says, I was sceptical. <laughs> <laughs> I love, so hopefully by the end of the review, that will change. Uh, but uh, I just love, uh, my favourite quote is from Dave Barry, the American guy, and he said, Own Colfer is the funniest writer in the world for his height. <laughs> <laughs> So th- thanks, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> that, that'll do. Uh, but it is a terrific read. It oh, really is. You. It's a thank it's you. a great rollicking read. And uh, we should also so the other thing you have this year, of course, is the movie Artemis Fowl yes. is finally I know <laughs> emerging into the light. I think you were in short trousers when that first <laughs> when that was first mooted. But yeah, twenty years later, Kenneth Branagh has directed it and. Uh, uh, one of your friends, Judy Dench, uh, yes. is, is in it, and she's fantastic. I I was sceptical when they said they were changing the action role of the 40-year-old man to Judy Dench, uh, but then I saw a clip, 
and never has the phrase top of the morning <laughs> been uttered with more menace <laughs> before. So uh, she had me, she converted me within two sentences. And um, that autumn as well, I mean, that, when that hit, did you... You know, because when you're alone yeah. and you're writing yeah. a book, and had you written books prior that went unpublished? Yeah, uh, I had written about six books that went unpublished. I'd had six books published, and that did very well on the toy show in Ireland. So I was uh, I was riding a very small wave in a tiny pond. But then Artemis came out, and it just went nuts, and it has remained like that yeah. for about twenty years. And when when do you know? Do you know when you're writing it, or does the publisher kind of go? Eh. This is quite good. <laughs> I, I didn't know uh, because my wife, Jackie, who you've met, and she's just said to me, okay, get an agent. Uh, and before I, she just said, yeah, that's lovely, well done. But this time it was, okay, time for business now. Get an agent. And, okay. uh, and, and so I did. But I really knew when I was coming to London and there was a, the Guardian was out and they, would, they have those photos on the top and there was me and David Beckham and I thought, poor David Beckham, you know, what a day. People just thought, there's David Beckham and his dad. So, so good I thought, genes, wow. Good genes, good genes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and in terms of uh, the global yeah. kind of imprint of that, yeah. um, do you have to spend a lot of your life touring and kind yeah, of... Yeah, I do. And that's not fun. I mean, I love the actual... Face FaceTime when you're talking with people and kids and, uh, you know, hilarious things happen and I file those away. Uh, but I don't, nobody enjoys airports, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the hotels. Even though they're fantastic, uh, sometimes I'm lying in my five-star bed thinking, this is, I'm so miserable. <laughs> I, I wish I was in a coal mine somewhere. But, uh, but you do get a little bit lonely sometimes. Yeah, whereabouts in Ireland are you? Uh, I live in Monkstown in Dublin. Oh, yes. But I'm from Wexford Town. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really lovely part of the world. And so there's a lot of writers live around there and we, you know, we have little meetings. No, we don't do that. They, no. <laughs> only the adult writers do that. That's why I wrote this book, to get into that club. Yeah, they've got dartboards of you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's doing very well, isn't he? Very well. Now he's writing adult well, books. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The novel High Fire is out January 28th in hardback, published by Joe Fletcher Books. Uh, more from a moment after your song choice. Now, what have you chosen and is there a particular reason? Uh, I have chosen Roxy Music, Virginia Plain, because I'm a huge fan fan of the glam uh, era uh, so uh, that's all I've been listening to recently and I think uh, Brian Ferry is one of the greatest lyricists um, uh, that we've ever produced I say we yeah well, <laughs> come on yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there we lose. <laughs> Rox, nicely faded. Or did yeah. it just stop? It oh, just, it just stopped. Just okay. Stopped. Uh, I was going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, Owen. Yeah. I'll lay a trap for the DJ. <laughs> uh, Owen Coffers here to talk I'll about I'll teach his... him to write books. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Owen's new novel, A High Fire, out January 28th in Harback, uh, published by Joe Fletcher Books. Right, uh, uh, someone just uh, emailed in. I first started reading Artemis File in my 30s, I'm 45 now, and I've reread it over again. Uh, Artemis totally kicks uh, Harry Potter's butt. Still love you, JKR. Uh, please thank Owen for doing what he does, and I can't wait to read his new book from Bash and Hove. There you go. Well, thank you very much, Bash. Is one of the th thinking behind this book is that that's what you can do, that the yeah. people who read... Yeah. Your books, you know, 19 years ago yeah. are now, you know, a little bit they are, older, a bit, a bit longer in the juice. The best uh, quote I had on that was uh, a young girl came up to me and said, at a reading, said, oh, my, my granny used to love your books. She's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so you would hope to bring them. You do often have three generations there at, at, at the um, signings. But, uh, yeah, I would hope that if you've read Artemis Fell, then you can kind of grow up a little with this yeah. book. And what is, Eric in Northampton is asking, what is it that draws you to the fantasy genre? Uh, what were your favourite childhood reads? Yeah, um, that's very easy. I grew up uh, reading those. And when I was in secondary school, um, I was, amazingly enough, when you look at my physique, not good at sports. But I, so there was a real need to belong when you're in secondary school. And that's where I found that there was five or six mates and we all shared these massive fantasy series. Uh, so there was no games or video. So I suppose that's what we did. And uh, I just loved the books. And, and I love the camaraderie of discussing, do you think he should have killed the orc number two? <laughs> or maybe just maimed him? You know, it was this inane conversations we had. 
And did we, you draw? Did you do? Oh yeah, I did all the drawing, and I I did think that I would be good enough um, to illustrate, do my own covers until. I saw an actual artist and I realised I'll just park that <laughs> and get back to it never. <laughs> so I let the professionals do that now. And having written this book, do you think you might, you know, go cold turkey and not have a dragon in, in your next book oh. or not have a not have that element? <laughs> Graham, there's no need to go extreme. <laughs> I think I'll do something that's a little more grown up like time travel. Um, Martha in Shropshire, during your conception of Art of the Fall, what inspired you to combine magic with science? I don't, didn't really write much about his conception. I just left that to the <laughs> imagination. No, magic and science to me seemed like a natural fit because one of the characters says that, you know, um, magic is just the evolution of science. So it's all science. Um, and I was surprised that people found that. Uh, unusual, and then I went went to Google, and apparently there are not many books about that. So it's almost its own little genre, which is lovely, which is nice. Yeah, but I always think someone must have done this before. Uh, when I think of a name or a story, you know, or, and I look it up to make sure I'm not just copying someone. <laughs> apparently, there is a story about Three Musketeers <laughs> already. <laughs> uh, Mary in Liverpool, is this what we, during the record we were just talking about? Is this I saw your theatre piece, My Real Life, when I was on holiday in Ireland? I thought it was such a clever idea for a play. What prompted you to write it? Uh, My Real Life uh, is about a guy who has uh, multiple sclerosis and he decides to take his own life. And so, um, what he does is he makes a tape for his friend to read at the after party, as he calls it. So it's quite, it sounds quite shocking, uh, but it's actually really funny. And it stars Don Witcherly, which you would know Don. He was in Father Ted. Oh, OK. Yeah, so uh, I remember we were papering on the Golden Mile in Edinburgh. So there was two middle-aged men with grey beards uh, trying to give out their flyers about MS. And beside us, there was two teenagers wearing spangles and bikini, <laughs> turning cartwheels. <laughs> and you can guess who gave away their flyers. <laughs> so, not us. <laughs> Uh, um, ba, 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 ba. Your books often have. Uh, oh no, I know uh, Molly in Northwich. I too was a member of the Warlord Club back in the day. Oh, yeah. Do you still have any of the old comics lying around, along with your secret code book? And who was your favourite character? Mine was Union Jack Jackson. Well, I'm also going to say Union Jack Jackson because I can't remember any. <laughs> Uh, Warlord was Sir, Sir Peter something, maybe someone will correct me, but that's what inspired the codes at the bottom of the Artemis Fowl books. So if you're a reader and you like breaking codes, as I did, you can spend hours. And all I pray whenever I get a fan, fan mail is, please God, not code. Please God, English, because I, it takes so long to write back to people in code. So, yeah, English, Do you please. bother? Uh, of course I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> Every, I'm a couple of years behind at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Because I have like dozens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... It, or two dozen. It, yeah. No, it's... I can imagine it's, yeah. uh, it's a difficult thing, getting letters from all over well, the world. Well, I have a standard postcard, and but then I write if there's specific questions, I would fill those in at the bottom. Oh, right. Uh, we shouldn't say that because you're just encouraging it now. <laughs> yeah. People are like, oh, I'm not right. Send them to me, care of Graham Norton, <laughs> BBC yeah. Radio. And they'll never get answered. <laughs> uh, what, what was your, this is extraordinary. Pippa and Bang, Banger is asking, about, what was your reaction when the Douglas Adams estate asked you to write a new Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book? Yeah. And how difficult was it to carry on such a legacy? I mean, how yeah. did that happen? And and saying yes. I mean, it's yeah. one thing to be asked, but then yeah. you've got to go yes. I said no initially, but then the idea started fermenting. And also then they told me, well, if you don't do it, we're going to ask someone really famous. <laughs> so I said, oh, I'll do it. And I actually, I did it and it was quite difficult. Uh, and I, I started to have uh, anxiety straight away. And it was my wife, Jackie, who helped me out because um, I, I was having trouble with a plot point. And I went into Jackie and said, oh, I'm very upset because I want to take off one of Zephod Beeblebrox's heads. And she just looked at me and she said, she what? And he's, I said, he's an imaginary alien. And she, she says something which I think is quite profound. She, she just said, well, I have to pick up the kids. <laughs> and when you read into that, it means, yeah, like, get a problem. Get a real, get a real problem, please. So I got over myself. And I met a very, very famous, maybe top three most famous authors in the UK. And I, I thought I would share this with them. I said, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about writing... Uh, the Hitchhiker, because it's a big, big boots to fill. And he said to me, Owen, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so that spurred me on a little bit. Uh, I feel better now.
Uh, very good. Listen, uh, we're out of time, so let's just remind everybody that the novel High Fire is out on January 28th in Harback, published by Joe Fletcher Books. Uh, own call for a pleasure. Thank you.